In the second video in this two-part series, we're going to finish off the refactor of the calculator app by Lucas Santos. In the previous series or the previous video, we worked on creating a used calculator composable, and you can see that here. We created this used calculator composable and it contains all of the logic for the calculator. The benefit was it allowed, to, allowed, us, allowed us to write a much more focused spec. For example, you can see over here, I was able to test my calculation without actually mounting my component or interacting with the UI. If we have a look at the previous spec, which we had to write before we made the refactor, we had to mount the calculator component, find the correct buttons, add the correct calculation, trigger the click, and then finally we were able to write our assertion. This works fine for small code bases and I have no problem with the original structure. However, if you want this to scale and make it very large, for example, maybe you'd like to make a very complicated scientific application, you probably do want to keep everything a little bit more separate and modular, making it much easier to test and work on. What we're going to do is continue our factor. So before we had to create and mount this component to do our calculation, and after we finished our factor, we were able to simply make our calculation like this. We called the composable, inserted the value to the memory, and calculated the result. This is a somewhat of an improvement, but we can do a lot better. At the moment, we're still kind of coupled to our UI layer. You can see we're using value here, and this is part of Vue's reactivity system. Refs have values, and that's what we're doing here. We're updating a ref. What I'd really like to do is take this refactor one step further and move all of our, our logic out of the, the view interactivity layer into its own little core modular library. And that's what we're going to be doing. The, this idea is called functional core imperative shell. And we have a little diagram here. You can imagine all of these small little dots are going to be pure functions. They're going to be immutable and the result is going to be deterministic. Whatever you pass in as arguments, you're always going to get the same result. And this kind of code is very easy to test. Finally, we have this interactivity layer on the outside, this very thin shell, and that's going to be our composable, hooking up our core business logic to our UI layer. And over here, we have the inputs and outputs. For example, the input, uh, the user input, or rendering something to the DOM. I first learned about this concept in an application uh, screencast called Functional Core Imperative Shell by Gary Bernhardt. I will put a link to this in the description. You definitely should go ahead and check it out. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started with our refactor. The first thing we're going to do is head over to our use calculator composable and the goal is going to be moving all of the logic out of use calculator into its own separate functions. Finally, if we go and do everything successfully, this test should still be passing. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and copy and paste all of this logic outside of use calculator and we're going to put it back into here as we need it and only as we need it. So inside of here, we're only going to have our view interactivity layer, our imperative shell. The functional core is all going to be outside of this. It's going to be completely independent and unit testable. Let's go ahead and get started with that one right now. So the first thing we need to do is make sure we move all of the view reactivity back into the composable. And that's going to be these three variables here, the three refs. I'm just going to go ahead and cut those and paste them down here. We now have a number of errors. Let's go ahead and fix those up. And once we fix up all of our errors, everything should hopefully be working again. So TypeScript is going to guide us through this refactor. The first function is completely fine. We have no errors, the same here, but the third function add digit is going to give us some problems. You can see we're accessing memory.value here. And this is basically a global variable or it was before we made the, we moved everything around. What we need to do is make sure we're passing everything as arguments and that's going to make everything deterministic and pure. No global variables and no mutation. So the first change we're going to make is passing in memory as an argument. Now we've done that, we're going to have to update these as well. Memory is now going to be a string. We're not going to pass in a ref. We want to keep everything separate from view in our core business logic. So we're going to remove the reference to value here. All we need to do is go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to record a macro to replace this one with memory. Let's go ahead and replay that one here. I'm just going to re replay that for every single reference to memory to get rid of value. Finally, now what we need to do is make sure we're not mutating any of our variables. We need to make sure we're returning new values instead of mutating existing ones. So what that means we're going to need to do is instead of returning here, we're going to go ahead and return memory. If that, the, the current business logic here is saying if the last digit is a decimal and the digit is equal to a decimal, we're going to go ahead and make no changes. We're going to return memory as it is. The next thing we're going to do is exactly the same down here. I'm not sure what this clear on next digit actually does. So just to get rid of this error for now, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that ref and make it global. Same with error. This is not going to be the final refactor. This is just going to be something to get our test passing. Then we'll continue on and figure out how to fix that one up as well. Let's head back down to add digit and continue our refactor. 
instead of making this mutation here where we mutate memory, what I'm going to do is return memory plus zero. It's going to be the same thing. Instead of mutating though, I'm returning a new value. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing down here as well. We're going to return our new value, which is going to be memory with digit appended to it. Let's go ahead and delete that one now as well. Finally, let's move on to the next function, add operator. It's going to have a very similar uh, refactor we have to make. I'm going to pass in memory as an argument. And then we're going to make the same refactor we made earlier. I'm just going to remove value from all of memory here. And then we're going to, instead of returning null, we're going to return memory. I'm going to do the same thing down here as well. So we're just going to change this to use string interpolation, interpolate memory and operator. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one now. And with a bit of luck, this is going to work just fine as well. The next thing we need to do is update the calculate result function. And as you would expect, the result is always going to be entirely dependent on whatever is currently in the memory of the application. Finally, we have to make the exact same refactor. Let's just go ahead and replay our macro a bunch of times. And that should be enough. Finally, we're going to update our return. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and return memory here. We're going to do the same thing down here as well. We're going to return an empty string in the case of error by the looks of it. And finally, we're just going to go ahead and return memory as well. I suppose that makes sense. I'm uh, going to do, that's actually just fine. We're going to come in here, try, and ultimately we're going to return memory anyway. So that should be working fine. The next thing we're going to do is head down to erase next digit and make exactly the same refactor, passing in memory again. <laughs> this is a little bit repetitive, but we're just going through the process. This is kind of what you have to do to make these refactors. I'm very glad we have TypeScript in our test to guide us. We're going to do something very similar here. I'm just going to return memory, and that's going to be the new value. We're going to do the same thing down here as well by returning memory. Uh, I have a little bit of an error here for some reason. I'm just going to create a new temporary variable and return that to see if my error goes away. I'm not sure why that error is showing up there, but it seems like it's fine now. Let's go ahead and delete memory value from uh, over here as well. And then we're going to make the exact same refactor one more time, and that should be everything we need to do. Uh, it looks like we can go ahead and actually just ignore this for now. Uh, clear, I'm not too sure what clear actually does or why it's mutating things like this. I suppose it just clears the screen. What I'm actually going to do is just go ahead and return an empty string, and I'm going to ignore error for now, just to get something working. We can see almost all of our errors are gone. Now we have one more error that's up here, erase last digit. This now takes the memory as an argument, so I'm going to pass that one in. And finally, we're going to go ahead and return that result. And all of our errors are now gone. Just because our errors are gone doesn't mean things are actually going to work. Things are not working, and that's because we haven't hooked up our integration or our view interactivity layer with our core business logic. Let's go ahead and do that now. The problem is we've changed the arguments. Let's go ahead and check, take a look at what at digit is actually going to take as an argument and make the correct change. So we can see over here at digit or add digit is going to take a number as the first argument. And if we take a look at our refactor, we're going to have two arguments. We have the digit and we have the memory. So let's go ahead and update that one as well. First argument is going to be a digit, which is going to be either a number or a string. And all we need to do is call the correct argument or the correct function here. We're going to say memory.value, memory.value, and that's going to be equal to add digit, passing in the digit, as well as the current memory, which is just going to be memory.value. Notice we're not passing in the entire ref, we're only passing in value. I want to make sure my core business logic has nothing to do with view or the reactivity layer. It's just going to be based on simple values, which is going to make things much easier to reason about and to test. We're going to make the same refactor here for add operator. I happen to know it takes an operator as the first argument, as you would probably expect. It's going to be a string, and we're seeing a similar pattern emerging here. Memory.value is now going to be equal to add operator. We're going to pass in the operator and the memory. And we can see what's happening here. Instead of mutating variables, we're going to go ahead and update these based on the new result of these functions. They are immutable and functional. We do have an error here. Let's go ahead and have a look at add operator and see what's going on. My guess is we're not returning the correct value somewhere here. Uh, let's see if we can actually check what the error is. It says here, string or undefined is not assignable to string. I guess this has to return a string, and that does make sense. In this case, it's going to be a string, and I suppose this can return undefined. Let's have a look at this function now. And there we go. We should be returning memory inside of here. With a bit of luck, our error is now going to be gone, and so it is. Finally, we're going to update calculate result. This one takes no arguments. It's based on memory and memory alone. So we're just going to go ahead and say calculate result and pass in memory.value. And that should be all we need to do. With a bit of luck, our test is now going to pass. Let's go ahead and give it a try. You can see the test is now passing. So everything went exactly as I was expecting. 
This refactor is not finished. I've only done enough to get this one very simple test passing. I have no doubt if I run the entire suite, we're going to get a number of errors. And that's because I didn't inter uh, implement a few functions. For example, we haven't got clear. We didn't really think about what this clear on next digit is supposed to do, but that's just fine for now. You can see the process I'm following here, and I'm sure if I continue on refactoring this, I can go ahead and get the rest of the test suite passing as well. The main thing here is not to make everything refactor, but it's to understand the concept and how we've managed to separate our business logic and our UI layer. We can now see how easy this would be to test. Let's take a look at the most complicated function, which is going to be calculate result. This is entirely dependent on memory and it has nothing to do with view or the reactivity layer. So we'd very easily be able to test a number of complex calculations. If we head back to our use composable spec now, our use calculator spec rather, we wouldn't even need to do subject.memory.value. The test would be even more simple here. All we would need to do is call our function passing in our result and assert the, the correct output. So the test would basically be one line. And this does make sense. The test is going to be very simple because the function is very simple. There's no mutation, there's no global variables. It's simple inputs in, inputs out. So it's going to be very simple to test. And this is one of the really big benefits of this kind of functional core imperative style. All these single little systems inside of here are going to be completely independent. They're going to be very easy to test and you're very unlikely to have bugs if you're writing functional immutable code. Anyway, that was the main thing I wanted to show you here. Let's go ahead and take a real look, look at a real world code base which implements an, a very similar pattern. The one I'd like to show you is xState. Now this is a very popular library for writing something called state machines and it's written in a very similar style. Let's have a look at packages and see what's going on. So they have their core logic that's going to be here. And as you would expect, this is a very, very big part of the code base. There's many files and some of these files are very long and complex. And that does make sense. The vast majority of the complexity of these libraries is going to be in the business logic. If we head back to the packages directory, we can see some of the other packages. In this case, we have the view integration and the react integration. And these are much thinner shells around the core logic. Let's just jump inside of here and have a look at the most complex file, which is probably going to be use machine. This follows a very similar pattern to what we just saw. We are importing our, our UI layer integration. In this case, it's going to be Vue or React. They're using use state, but for Vue, you would use something like use ref or just ref. We then have our core imports from our core business logic. In this case, they are using X state. And finally, we have our integration layer. It is a very thin layer. All it's doing is wrapping the core logic in the reactivity system. In this case, it's going to be React. So we're going to be using set state or use state. In the case of Vue, it would be something like reactive or ref. And this is a very good example of how this pattern can be very beneficial. By writing in this style, the xState authors are able to provide all these different integration layers. They have Vue and Svelte and React, and you don't even need to uh, work on the core logic here. It's possible to create an integration layer just by wrapping everything. So everything is nice and modular and very, very easy to test. Uh, that's mainly what I wanted to talk about here. I will go ahead and finish off this refactor and put the source code up just so you can have a look at what's going on. But the final point I wanted to cover is where the code actually lives in this code base. If we have a look at the view integration layer again, we can see it is very thin. It is approximately 20 lines of code and all it's doing is wrapping our core business logic. The bulk of the code is in here and this is exactly what I expected because most of the complexity of most applications is not going to be in the UI layer. It's going to be in your core business logic. If you did enjoy this lecture, I have a very similar one uh, on my YouTube channel called Functional Core Imperative Show, where we go through and build an entire application in this exact same style. Finally, if you'd like to read more in a book, I wrote a book called Design Patterns for Vue.js, which has a number of discussions around this kind of thing as well. I'll put a link to that one in the description as well if you are interested. That brings us to the end of this refactor. I do have to thank uh, Lucas for letting us use this really cool code base as his uh, as a demonstration example. I'll put a link to that one in the description as well if you'd like to go ahead and check it out. It's a pretty nice code base with a full test suite, so it's definitely worth having a look at how we set everything up, and you can definitely learn a lot from looking at these open source code bases. Anyway, that's all for now, and I will see you in the next video.